When you're looking for a Socket 7 motherboard, there's a lot more to take into consideration than what meets the eye. Which one is best suited for the job? What features are desirable in such a motherboard? Which configuration makes sense for the software that's expected to be used? I'll do what I can to answer these questions, and you can decide which one works for you. Only Intel Socket 7 chipsets will be covered in this video. Right off the bat I should bring up that none of them have AGP and all will only deliver ideal results with at most 64 megabytes of RAM installed. With the exception of one if some things are added, which I will explain later on. However, most will agree that Intel's chipsets are by far the most reliable of all in the intriguingly competitive field that was the Socket 7 platform. The 430FX chipset was released in early 1995 and is a carryover from the Socket 5 platform. Thanks to the new Socket 7 platform made available around the end of that year, it's possible to install Pentium CPUs up to 200 MHz. This chipset and the motherboards which use it are pretty archaic compared to the other chipsets that would shortly follow. There is no USB support and a lot of 430FX motherboards used old-fashioned asynchronous cache modules which are slower than the pipeline burst cache modules which were hyped up in computer magazines from early 1996. I tried upgrading the cache on my Asus PI P55TP4N to 512 kilobytes of L2 cache to make it even with the other chipsets but my revision doesn't take standard coast modules, so I conducted every test with L2 cache disabled. Keep in mind that if you disable L2 cache, you can upgrade to the maximum amount of RAM supported by any chipset without experiencing awkward speed penalties, as the CPU's internal cache will be able to address all of it no matter what. Still, I've only installed 64 megabytes of EDO RAM for each test. Combined with a Matrox Mystique and a Sound Blaster AW64, the 430FX chipset is competent for a lot of software from around its time, but will be punished by newer, more demanding programs. Perhaps there's something that could be done to squeeze more potential out of a 200MHz Pentium? Enter the 430HX, a very strong chipset from early 1996 that includes many more useful capabilities that, depending on which motherboard you get, is suitable for a mid-range server. Symmetric multiprocessing is supported for up to two CPUs, much tighter memory timings are possible, and upgrades can be made to allow the L2 cache to address up to 512 megabytes of RAM if your motherboard allows them. Later motherboards, particularly those from late 1996 and onward, can also take Pentium MMX CPUs, and the same goes with the other chipsets I'll talk about shortly. As for how much faster it runs, well, those tighter memory timings do speak for themselves in the software I've run, but not by a large margin. You can't necessarily expect anything too drastic since these are Pentium CPUs we're talking about here. Of course, these results might be giving sour impressions, but remember that L2 cache has been disabled. You'll very likely want it turned on so you'll have better frame rates with either 256 or 512 kilobytes of L2 cache. Around the same time as the 430HX, the 430VX was released. Like the 430HX, it supports USB devices that can take Pentium MMX CPUs, depending on if your board supports dual power planes. But, like the 430FX, it does not support caching memory beyond 64 megabytes, and its memory timings are in between the 430FX and 430HX. Even then, it's able to take SD RAM, which in itself is much faster than EDO RAM. Most 430VX motherboards only have one SD RAM slot installed, but if yours has two, Embrace them because the 430VX is not capable of taking very dense modules. The best you can throw in one slot is a 16 chip 32 megabyte module. A 430VX with EDO RAM installed is hardly impressive compared to a 430FX, so all you're really be getting is the convenience of a USB flash drive should you choose to install a bracket for your motherboard. Put in 64 megabytes of SD RAM though, and the 430VX is able to outclass a 430HX motherboard. I'd still say it's not as fun of a chipset as the 430HX, but being an inexpensive consumer-directed chipset, it's pretty impressive for what it can do. 
Finally, we get to the 430TX, Intel's last Socket 7 chipset from early 1997. It's a major improvement over the previous chipsets with EDO and SDRAM support at the tightest possible timings, as well as an Ultra DMA IDE controller providing bandwidth up to 33 megabytes per second if it is enabled in the operating system in CMOS settings. In other ways though, the 430TX is a regression from the 430HX, even if it is also a consumer-directed chipset. It's still stuck at only be able to cache 64 megabytes of RAM, and AGP was not quite ready for liftoff when this chipset was released. Still, it's much more flexible with SD RAM, so you can even use a single 4-chip 64 megabyte module, particularly for stabilizing intense overclocks. A 430TX motherboard with EDO memory is comparable to that of the 430HX kind, while SDRAM enables the fastest memory bandwidth of any Socket 7 motherboard sporting Intel chipsets. I should note that Unreal's frame rate in some 430TX tests is slower than those of a 430HX or 430VX chipset, depending on the type of memory you're using. There could be a number of factors that play into it which I can't readily name, but the difference is so tiny that it's not really worth concerning over. In general, the 430TX chipset with SD RAM is the way to go to maximize frame rates in your games for a Socket 7 CPU. That is, unless you want something even faster like a Super Socket 7 chipset with a 100MHz frontside bus, but that's essentially getting into another platform in itself. The chipset you choose may not be too important if you just want to slap together a Pentium rig for running old software. It's ultimately going to boil down to personal preference. Early chipsets provide greater authenticity in replicating such early system configurations while the later ones push the capabilities of a Pentium further. Whichever way you decide to go, any Socket 7 motherboard is great for running old programs under MS-DOS, Windows 95, and maybe Windows NT if you really want that. For the most part, the differences won't get in the way of your experience in retro computing, and benchmarking is not necessarily a be-all, end-all to determining the best chipset for the job. Such things like background processes and how programs are coded will alter your results, so... Don't worry too much about what you're getting unless you know exactly what you need, particularly Pentium MMX support. Spaceport. 